Hi everybody. Do you have a favorite TV show? Well, for a long time, back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, many Americans' favorite show was The Tonight Show, hosted by Johnny Carson. It was on this date, June 30, 1955, that the Johnny Carson Show made its debut. Not The Tonight Show, but The Johnny Carson Show on CBS, which did not do very well. But it was part of the process by which Johnny Carson eventually became the king of late night television. Pictured here is Philo Farnsworth, who's credited with inventing the television. Most people don't know about him. Uh, he's got a great story, especially his lawsuit against RCA for inventing TV, so that's a story you may want to look up sometime. So back in the 40s, you had three networks. They were networks in name only. They were basically New York City-based companies, and what they would do is use a kinescope to take movies of TV screens, and this is the test pattern they would use for focusing. And then they would send those movies across the country. And that's how the network worked. But then in the late 1940s, AT&T strung coaxial cable across the entire country, and you do get a true network. And in 1952, the network showed what they could do when they televised both party conventions for the 1952 election. So by the time we get into the 1950s, most Americans have a TV. It's starting to tie the country together. Rural and urban America are learning about each other. People are traveling more as they see what other parts of the country are like. They did tend to be kind of expensive, the first TVs, so the programming tended to be what you would call highbrow. That was a word that was used back then. It was all live, and in those early days you had plays written by New York playwrights, you had opera, but as more and more people got TV, the programming started to change to what you'd call variety shows. And some vaudevillians, like Milton Berle, and Sid Caesar, and uh, Jackie Gleason, pictured here, were able to make the transition. So when Johnny Carson was a young man, he did card tricks. He was known for doing them in his neighborhood. He had a cape and everything. He goes to the Navy in World War II, and the story is he did a card trick for an admiral, and that admiral was really impressed by that. So Johnny realized he had the ability to entertain all kinds of people. After the war, he ends up in L.A. He hosts a TV program called Carson Cellar. It tended to be local guests, things that was go were going on in the L.A. area. And one of the advantages of being in L.A. was other people could see him who were famous or who were in the industry, including Red Skelton, who asked Johnny Carson to be a writer. And Johnny did that, and he also filled in for Red once. When Red uh, was not able to perform, it was live TV after all, so Johnny just stepped in and did a good job. He was noticed by Jack Benny. He was on the Jack Benny show, and one of Johnny's things here was to imitate Jack, and he did that pretty well. So eventually, uh, CBS offered him his own show, and that debuted on this date, June 30. It wasn't successful, partly because it had too many writers and producers, but it did showcase some of his abilities. One was his ability to have guests on. And he was really good at that and interviewed them and made them feel comfortable. The other thing he did was play various comedic roles, which on The Tonight Show, which you see here, was known collectively as the Mighty Carson Art Players. But this was something he worked on in his first show. Eventually, he becomes the host of The Tonight Show in 1962 does that for the rest of his career. And part of the fun of this era is it was before today when we have all these networks to choose from. Back then you had three networks and there was one king and that was Johnny Carson. Certainly another era.